To start a campaign in D&D or any other tabletop RPG, you need three things. A setting for your campaign, an adventure to run for the session, and you need friends to game with. So in this video, we're going to talk about each of them. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be able to start your own campaign. So let's get started. First, let's talk about creating a campaign setting. There's really two ways to do this. You can run a pre-made setting where everything is made for you, or you can run a homebrew campaign where you make everything from scratch. Choosing between the two, it's really how much time and effort do you want to put into the campaign. Homebrewing your own world is really a ton of work and a lot of more time consuming, but in my opinion, it's also the most rewarding. But I do see how people don't have time for that. Pre-made settings are basically already established worlds like Dune, Game of Thrones, Faerun. So after choosing this setting, I would recommend trying to ask yourself, what campaigns are you interested in running? Do you want to run an action-packed campaign where combat happens more than once each session? Do you want to run a political intrigue campaign where there's a lot of role play and party alliances do matter? Do you want to run a horror campaign where there's not really a plot and the main goal is just survival? You don't have to decide which campaign you want to run yet. This is just to get the wheels spinning and get you to think about stuff for the next part of this video. Now that you have a clear picture of what setting you want to run, you have the idea of what locations, what NPCs, and what monsters your players will fight. There are many ways to write an adventure, but the easiest way that I've found is what is called the Dora the Explorer method. For all the international viewers out there, Dora the Explorer was a children's show where each episode starts with a problem. And over the course of the episode, Dora has to travel to three different locations and overcome three different hurdles in order to solve the problem. Now, if you combine this with what we talked about in the first section, then you have an adventure. So here's an example. Let's say that you're interested in an action packed campaign that has a lot of fighting. So in this story, an ancient red dragon terrorizes the kingdom of where all of your player characters are from. And in the very first session, the king hires the party, whether it's through a bounty or whether they know the king to reach its lair and end the dragon's reign of tyranny once and for all. But in order to reach the lair, the party first has to travel through the dragon red sap forest, cross the wandering dunes, and they have to climb up the Mist Vale Mountains. And in each of these locations, there would be challenges that the party has to overcome. So in this example, we have at minimum four different encounters, five different locations, a boss fight, and we have whatever happens in between. Simple, right? I'm just kidding. This can be as complicated as you want it to be. But at the very base level, a D&D campaign lasts more than one session. So meaning if your adventure runs more than one session, then it's technically a D&D campaign. Now let's talk about finding players to game with. If nobody is interested in your area, I would recommend the websites Roll20 and StartPlaying.Games. Roll20 is great because it also functions as a virtual tabletop for gaming online, and they have a little section where people post their games and try to look for players. StartPlaying.Games, I haven't used it before, but it offers a more premium experience. I haven't used it myself, but I have seen a lot of reviews online, and for the most part, everything is good. So. I would recommend checking that out as well. Just remember that when you play games online, not every game is for you. Not every player wants to play your game. So just keep that in mind. Now with that out of the way, let's talk about pitching your campaign. To do this, I would recommend a session zero. A session zero is basically just a group hangout where you and them talk about what you like, what they like, what ground rules to expect, and what the DM should expect from the players. You don't want to plan for a multi-year campaign, for example, if half the party are going to go off to college in a few months. So in this session zero, I would recommend trying to find a compromise between what you like and what the players like. Try to share your ideas from part one of this video. For example, if your players are a group of people that are really tired after a long day of work, maybe they want a more chill game with less stakes, with less combat, maybe even a game where character death isn't a major thing. If your group doesn't like role playing, maybe change your political intrigue campaign where instead a guild master is telling the player what to do and where to go. For me, the Game Master is all about trying to be a facilitator, because if the DM is not having fun and the players are not having fun, then what the heck is the point of playing the game? So that's it. That's everything you need to know about how to start running your very first D&D campaign. If there's anything that I've missed, please let me know in the comments down below. And if you like more videos like this, be sure to subscribe because I offer a lot of videos about how to play D&D, a lot of D&D content, a lot of D&D shorts, and I'll see you in the next video.